on to potentially the most fun part of the episode, and that's talking Division Three football preseason rankings. And uh, I'm not alone in this regard. Tonight we got not one, but uh, two gents joining me, the first of which you've seen his face on here a lot. Jimmy, what's going on, Phil? What a hat are we – what do we got on right there? Is that a Red Sox? So actually, this is the uh, – I wore this. I don't know. I've been uh, – I wore it today to when I was coaching, and it's a really special hat to me. It's like I got it in yeah. Cooperstown when I was like a travel baseball tournament. Okay. So Brooklyn Dodgers – wait, no, this side. Okay, it's like not a Boston light. Red Sox. Yeah. No. Wanted it's to make that abundantly Dodgers. clear. It's it is cool blue, hat. so. <laughs> it's like the Cooperstown collection, so it's and, like a pretty uh, – like, the man without a hat in the middle, uh, you saw him on here a few weeks ago. It feels like a little bit of a while ago now, but uh, Cole Burgess joins us, the man who you'll have known from Cortland, the national championship run, and uh, now on to the Bengals and, and a lot of things post-grad. Excited to have you join us tonight. Talk some rankings, dude. Hell yeah, I'm excited to be here. You know, I just, just got back to New York from the uh, OTA, so I was like, why not go talk some D3 football with the guys? You know what I mean? I'm excited why for not? it. No better time than the present, dude. And uh, the rankings coming out, uh, Lindy Sports, right? They put out the preseason rankings. And Lindy Sports Mag, known for their D1 coverage, less known for the D2 coverage, maybe not so much, if at all, known for the D3 coverage. So take all of these rankings with a grain of salt. I wish people could understand that when we post these out there. One, that we aren't, these aren't our rankings, right? And two, that... Lindy Sports Mag is not exactly the best coverage of Division Three football. Nonetheless... They do put some kind of, you know, method of, to their madness, some kind of algorithm that throws these together. So let's take a look at these rankings. And I think starting off, I think the first thing that is abundantly part of the conversation right now, defending national champs at third. I, I feel like that feels, in your perspective, got to be blatant disrespect. Tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no, definitely. And this, that's one thing I've never understood is, like, when a team wins it all and then they aren't number one in the preseason or any poll, to be honest, until they get beat, like, I feel like you have it until you don't, or at least that should be the way it is. But I guess that's not how Lenny football looks at it. And, uh, yeah, the Dragons, they got they got their work cut out for them, and they got to just prove people wrong again. I mean, it's yeah, going to be an 100%. interesting season. And you lose your top two wide receivers, obviously, in you and in JJ, who both, both go on to find professional opportunities, which in itself is ridiculous. That is just an awesome feat uh, for any school to have, let alone a Division three school. That's ridiculous. You lose those two. But now you talk about the rest of that offensive skill. You have some people on the outside still coming back. Obviously, Zach Boy's under center. Afano St. John in the backfield. You have some big pieces coming back on that offense when it comes to the skill positions that I don't think, outside of Zach, obviously, maybe get talked about enough. I feel like there's going to be more of a rebuild for the Red Dragons that a lot of people give them credit for. Um, Yeah. One thing I'm excited to see is just the way Coach Fitz handles it because, I mean, since he's been in the program, he's always made the most of what he had, you know, on the offense. And and this is just another year for him to do it. He's got Zach coming back. He's got Jaden coming back and some other playmakers, like you said. So, I mean, he's got the defense to uh, – they don't need to score 60 points a game, I don't think. That too. I think there's going to be – there's going to be a few 21-0 wins, I think. I, I, w I would love to see that because the defense is coming back and they're going to be they're going to be coming full throttle. So, uh, yeah, like I think the offense is just going to have to find a way to score 30 points a game, and I think th that'll do the job. And we saw that defense put on display at least, well, definitely in the first half of that national championship game. You look at the difference in the first half and the second half, and uh, both those defenses were just playing on their heads, I guess, so to speak. But to talk on, on Cortland and, and kind of their season coming up before we get back to kind of the rest of the rankings here, the Red Dragons are favored by at least two touchdowns in all of their regular season games in 2024. That's kind of a ridiculous stat in itself, even when you talk about uh, week three at Susquehanna, who that's a squad we're going to look at ranked in the top 25. You talk about a team that probably just missed the cut in Ithaca, back-to-back -back Liberty League champions, and obviously a rivalry game uh, to have that kind of spread, courtesy of Hanson ratings, Logan Hanson we had on the show uh, pretty recently here. Even teams like Brockport, who started a really solid defense and some other squads that uh, are certainly no pushovers, but to have... Those kind of numbers and that kind of hype, uh, that's kind of a lot to live up to. How do, how do we feel about that, being over two exactly. touchdown favorites in all these? Yeah, no, that is definitely a lot to live up to, especially considering the fact that we did, they lost me and JJ. And, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to be, like, cocky and all that, but, like, we, we really helped out the offense, made it explosive. So there's going to be young guys that got to step up. And uh, I, to be honest, the 14-point spread for all the games, I, I do agree with except for the Ithaca game. I mean – if just look at the Cortica history, it's always a nail biter down to the end. So I think Gotta they be. do win by more than fourteen every game, except except the Cortica game. I think that'll be a close game, and I 
yeah, I, I, that's what I think is going to happen. Maybe Susquehanna. Susquehanna, um, to be fair, it shouldn't have been as close as it was last year. We shouldn't have lost to them. If you watched the game, we were up by 14 and then just laid an egg in the last five minutes. So yeah. I think it's doable. I think it's doable, and we'll see how Cortica shakes out. 100%. Yeah, the Cortica, the Cortica spread, like that's just, especially when you talk about a story rivalry like that, to have that, that just feels ridiculous. Um, and obviously he goes off his projections and models, and I don't know what kind of weight that like history and rivalries have in that context. But I guess to move on here, Jimmy, I think the next biggest thing, at least in my eyes, that stands out, um, we can talk Wyack in a little bit too. Alma at 19, that feels chaotically low. Am I alone in, in saying that in that regard? You are not alone. In fact, uh, there's a lot of people in the Division Three community, including Logan Hanson, who we had on the show recently, as you said. like He had Alma like top 10. He, yeah. had, him at, he had them at 10 in his ratings. So and he's like really analytical and has a lot of like data that backs his reasoning and everything. And I just, I don't know, like you said, you're going to take these ratings with a grain of salt. And I think, I mean, Alma's probably seen that going like, what? Like 19? Like, come on, bro. I don't know. I, I, that was the I, thing I, that definitely stood out the most to me. I could speak on that because we did play them last year and uh, their offense was the real deal. Like we were the number one offense in the league and then it was North Central, but I think Alma was clearly the number three offense. It was a battle. Like we went back and forth for three quarters. I mean, I, I don't forget the amount we had in the first half, but I think it was like the total was 60 points or something in the first half. That offense is for real. They're bringing back a lot of star power, a lot of a lot of firepower to stretch the field. And I think, I think they're going to make a Elite Eight Final Four run again. For sure. Oh, yeah. I, I'd like to see that. And, you know, for Alma, too, you talk for me, you know, they return a lot of their offensive production, right? Guys on the outside, in the backfield, Carter St. John under center. There's a lot of really good things coming back for that Alma offense. Now, also, when you look in terms of rankings, right, if you want to be ranked in the top 10 and the top five, you really can't have any blemishes on your record in the regular season, right? And if it does, it has to be a really quality one. For me, for Alma, when you look at the MIAA, I don't see them having a whole lot of competition and a whole lot of foreseeable roadblocks in that conference. You're looking at teams like Hope gave them maybe a little bit of a run for their money last year. Maybe a team like Albion can bounce back. But for me, in that conference, there's not a squad that, that stands out and is going to give them really a great competition or a great run at that conference championship this year. And I, th I think that's the biggest thing for me. And then you look at see what they did scheduling out of conference. They're coming up here to Northern Michigan in a game where, let's be honest, they could very easily walk away with the win in that one against a Division II opponent who's been down in recent history. That also, you know, how that affects playoff things is kind of out of the window. But, you know, that just could build their confidence even more so. So Alma certainly feels like they're going to be uh, right in the conversation and right in the mix that the both of you agree with that one. But moving on, I think, to, to the biggest note and what a lot of people like to talk about it is who got snubbed, right? And I think people will put out different rankings but when it comes to these rankings looking at this top 25 from lindy's some teams that go out right away i'm just going to spout some names and then you guys get right into it but delaware valley maybe kind of a more controversial one but i know people were talking about it a lot ithaca doesn't make it after a second consecutive liberty league championship how about other wyack potential stout platteville names definitely in there i know oshkosh lost a lot but has certainly been in the conversation where do we think what's the first team off the top 25 that, that you think definitely deserves to be on this list? Yeah, I think Ithaca, it sticks out to me. Um, the past three years, they've been they've been a Northeastern power. I mean, they went to the Elite Eight against North Central two years ago, and then they lost in the Sweet 16. Was it the Sweet 16 last year? And and they're always just a, a, a powerhouse that it, it shocked me when I saw they were in the top 25. I think they're definitely worth the top 25 bid for sure. Yeah, 100%. Jimmy? I'm gonna uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna go bias aside here, and not, I'm not here gonna go. say stop. But uh, I will say, Platteville finished the year really, really strong. They won the Ithacus Bowl like very convincingly, and uh, they're always a very good football program. And I was pretty surprised to see Platteville outside the top twenty-five. On the topic of Platteville as well, how about the Platteville product that's with you in Cincy in Blazing? Yeah, Justin Bl Blazing. I call him Blaze. Uh, we call him Blaze, and it's crazy to, to have another D three guy going through what I'm going through in the in the in the NFL. I mean, he, we came really close throughout the uh, OTAs and, and he's got that right mentality. He's got the, uh, a good head on his shoulders and he puts in that work. I think uh, the sky's the limit for him for sure, but it's been cool being uh, able to have a teammate who is coming up from the same level I'm at and, uh, or I was at and going through the same thing I'm going through. So yeah, yeah it's man, definitely cool. That, that's ridiculous. He just seems like, again, I haven't seen the dude play in person. I know they gave a, a great game to Michigan tech last year. <laughs> He's got to be textbook, just physical freak of nature. Now, then again, though, isn't literally everyone on that roster and at that level. So that's kind of, uh, I guess, a, a given. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm our third round draft pick, uh, McKinley Jackson. He's about 5'10, maybe 330, but he's pull, doing eight pull ups like it's nothing. And I know some of my friends who, <laughs> who can't even do three of them. Like, I'm seeing freaks of nature that should they have no business doing pull ups, crank them out, and just doing all as well as other crazy things in the weight room. But in the moving the way they do, this is it's the next level. And Justin's one of those guys, like, he is a he's a beast. He's gonna. He's going to make it hard for uh, a coach to make a decision when it comes to preseason, for sure. Absolutely. And, and going back to, to look at the rankings, Jimmy, I know uh, you had, had talked about, or at least put in our notes here, talking about St. John's, Central, down there, and then Washington and Jefferson ranked in, the, in that top 25, potentially a name that maybe you weren't expecting to see on this list? Yeah. Um, another kind of team where I was like, okay, like they're, they're obviously a good program, but they're not the strongest conference in like yeah. – I think these rankings did not really take into account a lot of like the conference these teams play in. Like Mullenberg, another good program, but they're ahead of Alma. Like it's kind of just a head scratcher. Like again, it's not a shot at Mullenberg. That's more of just like a. I just feel like Alma's too low, personally. And Wait, then, uh, yeah, I know Washington Jefferson. Like we said, not in a great conference. Uh, I thought St. John's. Obviously, they didn't finish the year super strong, but they're just a perennial powerhouse in Division Three. Like they're always. Is good. I think they they opened the year last year at seven, and they're twenty four this year. So yeah. there's that's pretty that's a pretty decent size discrepancy in the differences of last year and this year. So that was kind of a definitely notable for sure. Yeah, and you talk about I guess focus on this top five right a little bit. So down the list for those listening goes North Central, Mount Union, Cortland, Wartburg, and Lacrosse, and. You know, I think if you were to blind test me and and to put like a kind of a top five teams in there. I really do think I would say those names. Honestly, I don't know if they would be in this order, but I, I feel like that top five feels like a really good consensus of where D3 college football kind of runs through right now. How do we feel about that? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like Mount Union hasn't lived up to Mount Union's name in the past five years. Okay. You know what I mean? I mean, last year they lose in the Sweet 16. The year before, did they, they lost in the championship. But I feel like they lost in the Sweet 16 twice in the past, like, Four years, and when you think about Mount Union, you think about all oh, the Purple Power, like the, all the national championships. And yeah, they had those, but not recently. So when I see them at number two at, ahead of the defending national champions, it kind of makes me scratch my head because yeah, they're going to be a powerhouse for sure, but they haven't done it. So I don't know why. I'm not sure why they're in front of Corland, and especially at number two, it's kind of crazy to me. No, I, I do hear I do hear where you're coming from, and and I totally get that. And I think you know a big part of that to play at least devil's advocate here uh, a little bit um, is that you know you have you talk about that expectations right. And I actually went I remember taking an unofficial to Mount Union when I was coming through high school, and and kind of one of their sticking points was like you come here, you play four years, you're gonna have a ring, and that was like that's their selling point because they're there, like you said, so consistently. Um, but that has changed a little bit, and I and so. While they certainly are still, like you said, a powerhouse, yeah, they haven't really been able to get the job done in that same capacity, that same fashion. But in that same light, maybe we're holding them to this ridiculous standard of what we think and believe and know that Mount Union is. So there's kind of that weird balance, I guess, for me, and and I guess just trying to play, you know, like I said, that middleman of of appeasing all. But I, I do get what you're saying, and I think a lot of those picks, when you talk about North Central and Mount Union in those top two spots, it's a lot of history-based stuff, right? And for and right. for Lindy's, I'm assuming that's where a lot of that's coming from. How about the Wartburg and UW Lacrosse, two teams we haven't talked about at least tonight quite as much. Wartburg, I think you go back to that game uh, that was a semifinal, I believe, correct, against North Central, and that game back and forth, that was an incredible one to watch. Uh, Jimmy, we had the chance to see UW Lacrosse play North Central in person and saw the talent they had on display. They do graduate quite a bit, losing some key pieces um, over there down in Wisconsin. But uh, Jimmy, how you feeling about uh, the Eagles heading into the year? Um, well, obviously, anytime you have a head coach as uh, great as Coach Janice, I mean, you're going to have a chance. I mean, when you have a guy like that leading your team into battle every week, you know, you know, you're going to give yourself a chance to win. Uh, I mean, I don't see any reason why Lacrosse doesn't have a great year. I mean, they're obviously had a fantastic run last year, ran into a powerhouse in North Central. Um, I, another thing I'd like to add earlier, we were talking about like offenses that like stood out like last year, this year, whatever. I mean, lacrosse is definitely like a top three caliber offense in, in okay. division three last year, in my opinion, you know, you had guys like Kaiser Halterbrand, Jack Studer, like, you know, some real dogs out there. So 
explosive. And it's going to be much in the same in that, uh, you know, them and Whitewater is kind of the race for the top of the WAC. Or are we going to see um, another one of these, maybe like that second tier of WAC team, maybe kind of take that next step this year and, and be more in the hunt? Not that they haven't been in the past, obviously, but you know what I mean. It's been a two-horse race uh, these last couple of years. Is that going to stay the, stay the same or change up a little bit in uh, 24? I think it's going to change up a little bit. I think there might be a few dark horses that people aren't really seeing coming in the WAC, and I think it's going to be uh, – It'll be an interesting year for sure. Yeah, I know you've been very high on River Falls, and and rightfully so. We talk about returning a lot and returning your guy under center and Blaha. So um, that's a squad and an offense. I think more particularly, we probably should keep our eye on. Mm -hmm. Definitely, absolutely, like that. Yeah, absolutely. And then Warburg, I guess more particularly when it comes to them. I mean, I admittedly haven't followed them a, a ridiculous amount. We did the story on the uh, the offensive lineman that was also uh, an all-conference golfer over there for the Knights. That was an awesome one. But uh, other than that, we haven't talked too much about Warburg this offseason. You look at, I believe it was Owen Grover, right, that incredible linebacker they had. They had a whole linebacker core and a defense that was playing outstanding ball throughout the course of the playoffs. They graduate quite a few of them. So it'll be interesting to see what they do, and that's the uh, – the American Rivers Conference, if I'm if I'm correct in saying that, uh, I'm not sure what conference they're in. To be honest, I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask you. I was gonna ask you about Warburg because as a player, I always saw them uh, recently, the past two three years, like in the top top five, top three, whatever. But I never really heard much about them. I knew they had the nice running back. I think Turbo they called him. And a really good defense. But other than that, like, I never really heard much about Warburg at all. But I just saw they kept winning and winning. Haven't been able to get past the Final Four. But, but yeah, yeah what, what, who are they bringing back? What, what's their – how are they going to be winning games this year, basically? That's a that's a really good question, and, and to be honest with you, one I'd have to do more research on. It feels like for me, obviously, being we're still in the grand scheme of things, pretty new to covering the whole small college scene, and we're not like totally tapped in with everything. I need to do my homework on Warburg because it feels like their mo over there is like they're not a you know, a flashy team and one that has this big, uh, you know, social media presence and other things of putting out. And it's not a knock on them at all. It just feels like kind of the way they, they go about their business over there. They show up and they win a lot of games. It is the American Rivers Conference. So I did at least get that one correct um, in saying that. Uh, looking at their conference, though, and kind of their competition throughout the course of the regular season, if my computer would like to to load this up. But in short, I mean, to answer your question, I have to do my homework. I really do on Warburg because right. I don't think I know nearly enough about uh, about that squad and what they're returning in 20, 2024. But uh, anyways, talking about the uh, the ARC and that conference, it looks like Warburg obviously on top of that one. But you look at teams like Augustana, is a squad in there that uh, has certainly made a lot of noise. Co College has has their had their game. Saint o Saint Olaf, excuse me. Um, going down the list though, Gustavus, Jimmy, a team that that you've seen, um, and Central. Central would be the other notable one in that in that conversation in that conference, and the other one that is in this uh, top twenty five. They're slotted in at seventeen. So, yeah, uh, long way of saying I have no idea. Cool. <laughs> right from from what I understand is they're just they. They play physical football. They stuff the run and, the, and they run the ball. So that's what I know about them. I haven't played them. I watched their one game against North Central in the Final Four, but that's really all I know about them. To be honest, is that they run the ball and they stop the run. They got a great defense. Yeah. Hey, shout out the Knights. That's on me. I'm gonna do my homework. I'm gonna get right with you. But, um, fellows, before we before we close it off, any other squads here that uh, at least their positioning or other pieces kind of pique your interest or other uh, sorts of that nature? No, I, th I think the biggest thing for me is just seeing Portland at number three. You know, they have yeah. the house. They're, they're at the top. They, they should have the number one spot until they get beaten. You know what I mean? Fair enough. I'm Fair with enough. you, Cole. Like, for sure. Like, you know, I, obviously I don't make any rankings or anything, but I also would have put Cortland at one. Like, you guys beat North Central. You should be number one. Like, does that mean North Central can't go win the national championship the, this year? No. But, but the team that won it last year should be one. You know, I 100%. So. No, uh, right. no conversation on Mary Harden Baylor just sliding right back into ten after the season. Yeah, that was year. a little I, that, that caught my eye too. They okay. would they lose four games last year. Yeah. Now three? again, what was it? granted, they might have had the toughest out of conference schedule yep. in all of Division three football. So I'm going to at it least is. give them a little bit of slack there. But you talk about a team like Mount Union that was not the same as what we're used to, and the Purple Powers, right? Going right back to that conversation, Mary Harden Baylor was very much. Uh, not in that category. Harden Sim is taking advantage of that, being the benefactor and uh, winning the conference down there. And the, and uh, 
it, it, at least in these rankings, that certainly doesn't seem to matter. Hey, they slide right back in at number 10, and, and we'll see how they handle that. Yeah, we will see how they handle it. I, I forgot they were in the top 10, to be honest, especially after the year they had. So, I mean, they've been a powerhouse, like you said, Purple Powers. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll see. It, it's too early to tell. They're definitely not a top 10 team in my eyes yet. I mean, they should have been a top 25. But, uh, yeah, these rankings, I mean, there's, they're so, so baseline right now. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Yeah, that. one of my notes here was like, we'll see what these rankings look like at the end of the year. I say, you know? it ain't about where you start, about where you end up. These rankings exactly. are uh, just a piece of it, and if anything, just a conversation point for us. But uh, unless you guys have anything else, I think that's all for us tonight, fellas. I appreciate y'all joining me, man. Yeah, let me just let me just say one thing for all the all the guys who are looking at the rankings, getting ready for their season. Uh, coming from a guy who was just doing it last year, seeing our rankings and not being happy and always questioning, like, are we really not? where we think we should be. Like, I looked at the top 10 like it was an impenetrable wall. Like, you have mm-hmm. to be this powerhouse to be in there. But really, the, the rankings don't mean anything. You get into the playoffs, and it's one game. Who's going to come there? Who's going to play the best that game? So, the number one goal as a, as a uh, Division three football player is to get into the playoffs because anything can happen at that point, and rankings are out the window. Well said. Well said, my man. Yeah, tell that to uh, – we'll go back to the Grove City kicker. But – yeah, thank you. That, Literally, you're you're just that, that makes me think about like how because we were close to losing in the round one and round two. So oh, yeah, how many te- how many teams have been amazing teams but just got a little unlucky? Because you know what I mean. One thing I realized was that it takes a lot, a little bit of luck to get into a to win a national championship. You're playing five rounds of playoffs. It takes a yes. small amount of luck, a lot of skill, but a small amount of luck's got to play into it too. Like we were about a foot away from him making that field goal and never seeing what we did. So. 100%. It makes me wonder how many teams have gone it. through that. You absolutely need it. And uh, yeah. we will uh, we'll find out who has it this fall, gents. But uh, glad to have you boys on here. Have a good rest of your night. I hey, appreciate Take it, care. man. See you guys later.